Alhamdulillah, thank you for having me. I was born in Jamaica as a Christian, but it was what they call a nominal Christian by name. I really didn't leave Christianity to become a communist, but I embraced communism for the concepts that it stood for. And in doing so, I rejected Christianity. Difficulties and problems that human beings were facing all around the world, you know, this, these problems could be solved through communism. So I joined commun the communist movement based on that understanding. After spending some time in, in communism in Canada and in the U.S., I came to see certain flaws. Communism was beautiful in theory or from each according to his ability and to each according to his need. That you would work if you are strong and you would work, you know, that extra. But your needs were less, smaller, so you would only take according to your need. So the one who is next to you, who is big individual, he has big needs, he will get the big chunk from what is uh, produced. But what is required of him, because he's a big individual, he can only do a little bit. He only does that little bit, and that's okay. It sounds beautiful, but in reality, human beings want to see the reward for the effort that they've made. I then became open to look into religions. If I rejected religion in the first place, it was based out of an ignorance. I didn't have really knowledge of religions. So I began to read about Buddhism and Hinduism, other religions, and I quickly saw that they really weren't practical, you know. That kept me searching through various religions, talking with different people, different backgrounds, you know, until I came across Islam. And um, from reading a particular book called Islam, the Misunderstood Religion, in which he made a comparison between communism, capitalism, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, all the various isms, he made comparisons and identified the good points and identified the bad points, negative points. So what I saw at the end of summary of the reading of the book was that all the good which was in communism, all the, that good could be found in Islam. And what was not good, negative, etc., was missing from Islam. It's not in Islam. So it is as if Islam combined all the good that human beings had come up with in one way or another, and it avoided all the bad, the harmful things which, you know, different societies uh, adopt and different religions practice. The rest of it was just, for me, it was, I looked at it as sort of like a discipline. The praying five times a day, this is putting certain discipline in your life, organizing your life and so on. So, so. I mean, at th that time I had given up smoking cigarettes and, you know, I used to be a mus musician also. So I gave up music, you know, uh, so th my life was, was, uh, had reached a point where I was ready for Islam and, um, I had fallen asleep and during the sleep, I saw myself riding a bike, walking it into a huge storage area or something like this, a garage or something like this. The door was slightly open. I was enough to, for me to get in, but it was completely dark inside. And I kept walking in further and further. And each time I would look back to make sure that the entrance that I came in through was still there. So there was a kind of a fear that I had that, you know, it might close on me. So I kept walking till I reached a point when I turned back and it was all black, couldn't see anything. And at that point, I had the feeling that if I didn't get out of here, I would never come out. It was death. So I started to shout, call out to people who were in the commune, but the sound never left my throat, you know, and nobody could hear me. Nobody could come and help me. Finally, I felt myself, it's all over. I'm gone. At the point when I let go and accepted, I had no way to take myself out of this situation. I woke up. And that ju was just the final point, which just confirmed for me God's existence, that it was God who took me out of here. My friends, my circumstances, nothing, it couldn't help me. So it just was like the final point. After that, then everything else was just smooth sailing. Probably the most 
exciting moment my, in my experience was during the first Gulf War. During that period, some half a million American troops were brought into Saudi Arabia to fight Saddam, to stop him from taking Kuwait. I was invited by a Saudi sergeant who was himself engaged in Dawa amongst those troops. So he would visit many of the American troops and try to invite them to Islam. That we set up a Dawa tent in the midst of the uh, encampment of the American soldiers who are being processed out of the country. And there we had tables with many booklets about Saudi Arabia, and the animals and the birds and the things of Saudi Arabia. And we also had copies of the Quran in English for those who wanted to buy and groups of the military soldiers, men, women, uh, who would come in maybe 150 to 200 at a time. And so the message of how Islam is lived in the culture of the people was being conveyed to them. And gradually, a number of them were taken to visit mosques, see what's happening inside of the mosque, see how Muslims pray, and they would ask questions and all of this. Uh, we arranged for female soldiers to go to the homes of Saudis who studied in America. Their wives were there. They studied there also. They could communicate with them. So they got a chance to meet with Muslim women in the, in the process of openly discussing with them anything they wanted to ask. Uh, Alhamdulillah, over a period of five months, they were processed out of the country and more than 3,000 of them accepted Islam from our tent there. Before Islam, there was no clear purpose. There were things that should be done and you try to do them to make the existing life a better life. I mean, I, in all my readings of Marx and Engels, and I, I don't remember reading anything which spoke about the purpose of life. It was not there anywhere. As a communist or as an atheist, I mean, you already believe that this is an accident. So if it's an accident, what's the purpose of accidents? Accidents just happen. <laughs> that's, that's how it is. You know? you know, people at certain points may question, well, what's the point of all of this? They'll ask that question, but they don't have an answer. As a Muslim, of course, the purpose in life becomes attaining paradise. Life is the the transition route to everlasting life, what we call Jannah. So how do we get to Jannah? Through worshiping God. And that's why Allah had said, I didn't create the 